Hi everyone, my name is Moni. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we're going to be showing you how to play a game that is coming to Kickstarter called Illiterati. This one's designed by three different designers, Gary Alaka, John Kang, and Rob Chu. And it's published by Gap Closer Games, who are helping sponsor this video. And in this game, there's a secret organization called the Illiterati. Mm. And uh, their mission is to destroy all books because reading is hard. According to them. Yeah. As members of the League of Librarians, players are working together to try to preserve as many books as possible while battling the Illiterati. This game plays one to five players and essentially boils down to a real-time cooperative word game where we'll be trying to race against the clock to create different words and accomplish different goals. And today we're going to be showing you how to play it. But before we begin, we do want to mention that this is technically considered a prototype copy of the game, which means things are subject to change in the final copy. But if you'd like to know more about the game as well as the campaign when it launches, we'll be including a link to the campaign down below. And last but not least, if you do like these kind of videos and you want to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, we are ready to begin. So if you please direct your attention to the set of the table, we are all set up here for a two-player standard game of Illiterati. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of give you the lay of the land. In the middle here, we have a deck of a Illiterati. Mm -hmm. This deck consists of the different villains that we are going to be battling uh, throughout the game. And beside these villains, we have the two different types of books that show the different uh, objectives that we're gonna be trying to fulfill in order to win. Mm -hmm. And so there are two different types of books. There are torched books, which are red, and there are waterlogged ones, which are blue. And at the start of the game, each player is dealt one red torch book as a starting objective to try to fulfill. Players are also dealt a starting hand of five letters. And in the middle here, we have the library, which is going to be where we can hold on to letters from round to round, keeping in mind that there is a maximum capacity. In a normal difficulty level game, that capacity is three letters. And before we continue, I also just want to mention that there are three different difficulty levels of play that come with the game. There's normal, hard, and legendary. Mm -hmm. And the differences here are going to determine the library limit, as well as the number of burned letters that are allowed in terms of difficulty, as well as the number of books each player has to complete in order to win the game. Mm -hmm. And today, we're going to be talking strictly about the normal level of difficulty. And so a game of Illiterati is played over the course of several rounds. Each round is consistent of three different phases. If either the villain deck is completely exhausted or we burn too many letters, then all of us lose as a group. But if we're able to complete all of our objectives before either of those things happen, then we win. And so the first phase of each round is called the word building phase. The very first thing that happens is in addition to our starting five letters, we gain more of them. Mm -hmm. And the number of letters that you receive is dependent on player count. Yes, in a multiplayer game, you're going to receive seven. And in a solo game, it's 10. All right. So now we have our, our true starting hand. And so you may notice a couple things about these letters, namely the fact that they are color coded and each color pertains to a specific symbol if you have difficulties with uh, with color. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because if you take a look at our, our starting books here, we're going to completely ignore the right-hand side of the book that says final chapter and only focus on the left-hand side here. And so this is going to be my individual objective that I need to fulfill in order to move on. Mm -hmm. So in this example, I'm going to need to create enough words that have at least eight or more letters in it that all spell out different types of body parts. In addition, I have to include at least three different letters that are green green with the cloud symbol on it in mm -hmm. order for it to be considered complete. And for me, my objective is to have eight letters that correspond to different sports terms. And I have to have at least three orange symbols. So that's going to be uh, my goal. Mm -hmm. Right now, I see I only have one orange symbol. There's one here in the center and Monique has two. So hopefully I can get it done uh, in this round. Yeah, and you're not required to get all of these done in one round. It might not even be possible to do so. It would be ideal, but not maybe not possible. Right. And so once everybody has been dealt all of their letters, then the true word building phase begins. So we have a three minute timer here. Once everyone's ready, we're going to flip it over. And it's basically the real time aspect of the game. Mm -hmm. All players around the table are going to be simultaneously trying to put together words using their letters as well as anybody else's letters around the table. Yes. You can share these. You can also borrow them from the library. Keeping in mind that if you have too many letters left over at the end of the round that are not a part of one of your created words, you're possibly going to have to burn one of them. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the ways in which the group can lose. Right. Which means in this game, survival is most important because sometimes you're not going to be able to complete your objectives with the letters that you have, or maybe you can't think of it. It. You are legally allowed to create words that do not pertain to your objective just to survive so that you don't throw in wasted letters into the center. I don't know for sure, but it's a word that will keep us... Rule. Okay. Right? Rule? Is okay. that a sports term? Okay. Yeah, yeah. What is this? Rule. Uh, okay, so now it's not the Q. Q. M -Y. And then M-Y. There you go. Okay. Done. Cool. Woo! 
Once the timer is done, then all players move on to the next phase, which is called the bookbinding phase. Here, we're going to verify all our words, mm -hmm. see if we have any leftover letters and if we exceed the library limit, and then we bind our books if possible. Mm -hmm. So first things first, we're going to verify all of our words. So I have ribs, foot, which these two are specifically for my objective mm -hmm. here. I also have dove and q. Those, and those are, are all real words and Just legal. to survive. Yes. How about yourself? Okay, I have the word hitter and rule, and those are also real words that yep. will keep us alive. Yep, minimum three letters, and mm -hmm. they're all legal. If any of these words were misspelled or invalid, then all the letters go into the library, which is very, very bad. And so speaking of the library, the library capacity for our game is three letters. Mm -hmm. And so right now we only have two letters in here, which means we are completely safe. Had we exceeded the three letter limit, then we would have to flip them all over, shuffle them, and then one of them randomly gets burned and is placed on the burn tracker. And for the rest of the game, we no longer have access to that tile. Mm -hmm. If at any time we have four or more tiles on the burn tracker, then we lose immediately. Mm -hmm. At that point, if you still had more tiles than your library capacity, then you would randomly discard down to that capacity and then flip over the rest of them face up so that you can continue to use them from mm -hmm. round to round. And so if during this phase you were required to burn a letter, then you would skip to the next phase and nobody gets to bind any of their books. Mm -hmm. But because we did not burn a letter, then both of us have the opportunity to bind our books. And so I believe I've completed my, my objective here using these two words. Yeah. I have ribs and foot. So yes. that is a, a combined total of eight letters. Yep, a minimum. Yep. Minimum. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And I also have these three green tiles as a part of it. Yep. Since I was successful, I would then turn my torch book over to show that I've completed it. And then all of the letters that were a part of the solution get placed in the discarded letters bag. So the game does come with two bags, mm -hmm. one bag to store all of the letters that you grab from yep. and the other bag to discard. How about yourself, Naveen? Okay, so I have the criteria of sports terms. So I was able to create two words. We have hitter, mm -hmm. like a baseball hitter, yep. and rule, because there's rules in all sports. So okay. <laughs> I used a total of 10 letters, so I did exceed the minimum of eight. And and I had three letters have that orange or kind of that target symbol. Uh -huh. So I was also successful in that. And so now I will turn in all these and I'll flip over my red book, put its completed side. All right. Yes. And these go back in the bag as well. Mm -hmm. And since we both completed our objectives, we get our second one which is gonna be a waterlog book. So these ones are a little bit uh, more difficult. So as an example, my book is called The Pilgrim's Process. Okay. And so this is gonna require me to have two different words, one that is three letters in length and one that is five or more letters in length. Mm -hmm. And they have to start with the same three letters. Oh, okay. So the example here is rat and ratio because both words yeah, start with an R-A-T. Right. So that's gonna to be tough. <laughs> that would be tough, yeah. Okay, I have Celsius 232.78. <laughs> and it's uh, 10 or more letters, and it says an equal number of vowels and consonants. Ooh. A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. Good so luck. <laughs> maybe I can use this Y that's in here in the middle. And to make things even harder, before the end of the round, the villains attack. Yes, the illiterati we've been talking about. That's right. So at the very, very end of the round, before we move on to the next one, we're going to flip over the topmost villain card from the deck, and we're going to resolve their effect. And uh, usually they try to force you to discard words in front mm -hmm. of you so that it uh, makes it harder for you to complete your objectives. Yeah, a lot of times they'll, they'll make you break up different letters, so mm -hmm. then like the word that you were hanging on to going into the next round is no longer there. Right. And so our villain here is Minerva Fantine, the headmistress. Oh yeah. my goodness. And uh, What's her according, little quote there? Yeah, according to her, detention is too good for you. Oh, wow. <laughs> does she have claws going through that thing? I think she does. Oh, yeah. She is destroying an F as we speak. <laughs> so her power says discard two letters unless you have two or more of the purple letters in your words. And you have to discard two letters unless you have two or more orange. And it applies to all players. All players. So... I'm looking at my words and neither of those apply. So I'm gonna to have to discard a total of four letters. Four letters. Wow. I'm gonna go all vowels because okay. we need vowels in order to make these words. So I'm gonna get rid of the V for sure. Um, let's do the, the D. D. Okay. The C. I think the U. The U. Probably, yeah. Okay. So these are these are my four letters that were removed by Minerva over here. Minerva. And so considering the fact that I have no words in front of me, uh, I do not have to uh, deal with Minerva. You avoided her I, wrath. I did. Now the letters that are left over, I get to use in the following round. I do want to mention though that in the future, all these villains stay face up, which means in a future round, the spread may look a little something like this. And so if during the villain phase, you draw a villain that has already been played in the past, then the villains actually stack mm -hmm. just like this. And unfortunately, you have to resolve both of them in that round. Yeah, it's called chaining. So there's a mm -hmm. chain of events that happens. Minerva is going to strike twice 
and you're going to have to read the text and then resolve accordingly. Yes, and they are not the exact same ability. Mm -hmm. And once you've fully resolved the villain phase, then you set up for the next round and you begin again. Once everybody has completed both of their books, then we go into the final chapter. As a group, we decide if we want to draw a book from the red torch books or the blue waterlogged. And then we face the final chapter together, trying to complete the final objective that's on the right-hand side of the book. And so in this example, the Knights of the Hexagonal Table is going to require each player to come up with words with a minimum of 12 or more letters that have at least five of them of any of the four colors, but they must all be shapes and math terms. Mm. And so again, all players have to individually complete this objective, and we also have to turn in all of our words in the same round. And so if you are able to do this as a group before either the villain deck runs out or you burn too many letters, then you win. you win. And so there you have it. That is how you play Illiterati in a nutshell. Just keep in mind that we did not showcase all the different types of letters. There are some wild letters in the bag. Mm -hmm. And there are also some other rules depending on the difficulty level you play as well as the player count. But again, this game is going to be on Kickstarter on March 1st. We will include all of the links in the description below. But if you have any questions about the game or anything that you saw today, please feel free to leave us a question down below and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye. Bye.